if you want to take Genesis as literal truth, yeah, we got a problem with you. <laughs> you, you. You don't understand the actual universe if you're referencing big biblical Genesis as your understanding of nature. Yeah, I'm, I am fearless of AI. The AI, the Hubble telescope is an expression of AI. We program it and it does it. They're all worried about the general intelligence AI where it can deduce, uh, make decisions that you never programmed it to make. And I think that's a kind of cool thing if it can do that. I don't have a problem with it, but just bring it on. I'm, I'm ready for it. And on top of that, they're assuming in some parts of it that AI will achieve consciousness and thereby be self-driven. But we don't even understand our own consciousness. Because everybody's totally fixed on matter is the ultimate reality, they're trying to explain how consciousness could possibly come out of matter, and they're getting nowhere. They've got theories in quantum physics that try, theories in information sciences, chemical theories, nothing works. But nobody dares question the assumption, and the assumption is that matter is unconscious. And that's the problem. If matter is unconscious, the problem is how on earth does consciousness, awareness, ever arise out of something that has no awareness? Now, the term psychedelic is usually associated with mind-expanding chemicals, consciousness-expanding drugs that grow on the earth. But the root of the word psychedelic actually means to make manifest the mind. Now, you can see why psychedelic substances you know, bring our visions into being. We call it active hallucinations. But is this not in many ways the same thing as our imagination? And is technology not in many ways a manifestation of the human mind? Embodied imagination, the actualization, the rendering of our hallucinations into existence. You know, the creature that ate the mushrooms and then started doing art on the caves is the same species that hallucinated starships into existence. Technology is literally psychedelic. It literally is outsourced cognition and how we extend the boundaries of the human mind. The goals of mind expansion, the counterculture 1960s ethos of expand your horizons, transcend your reality, make that cognitive leap is no different than the manifestation of our information technology. Google is the first psychedelically informed superpower. Its visions of interconnectivity and interconductivity and repository of all of human knowledge becomes almost like, like Gaia, like a collective consciousness. So again, the whole notion is that we should really come to understand that the whole psychedelic revolution from the 60s ended up being literalized by the information technologies that have transformed our world over the last 30 years. I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said uh, uh, he was in favor of, uh, of uh, finding your own self and, and uh, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law under love. It was a very powerful statement. I'm sorry he isn't around now to appreciate the glories that he started. And I think a broader point really is how Burning Man uh, is so similar to the 60s. The 60s counterculture in San Francisco, these hippies, they believed in peace and love and hugs, free love, free drugs, and that that was going to bring about, you know, an, an end to wars and violence and make the world a better place. And now those hippies have grown up and that Grateful Dead, Deadhead generation are judges and lawyers and bankers and doctors, kind of the mainstream of society, and the kids today rebelling, certainly in San Francisco, these burners think they're going to Burning Man and they're saving the world, and that just by, you know, peace and love and hugs and all of that stuff, it, it's the same, you know, ideas all over again. And when we look behind it, we find the same people, the same organisations, and as you pointed out, the, the same frameworks. If I realise that I am a child of God, that I'm just an idea in the mind of God, then and only then 
do I get to realize that you are the same thing? And on that realm, there is no separation between us. On that realm, there is no competition between us. We're talking about a universal consciousness where I'm going to talk to the Spirit of God within every living being. Now, whether we call that the zero-point energy field, we call that universal intelligence, we call it God. The zero-point energy field is a new name for God. So it's an ocean of holographic records that houses within it the history of every living being and makes the connection possible through means of a quantum process. And that quantum process is unconditional love. I give the CIA a total credit for sponsoring and initiating the entire consciousness movement, counterculture events of the 1960s. Matter and energy are emanations of some deeper intrinsic order. All these seemingly separate selves, seemingly separate identities, going about their own lives, living what appears to be a separate existence and yet we are all fundamentally sharing the same unified consciousness that the universe is made of. We've now seen scientific proof that the universe emanates from a geometric seed that doesn't have any space or time. Since we are conscious, consciousness must be in that seed. All of the universe is emanating from this. So there is scientific grounding to support the law of one philosophical stance which is that, in fact, there is a one infinite creator, and the universe itself is a living, conscious being. Space, time, energy, matter, and biology are created by a universal consciousness. How's it going, everyone? This video might be a little bit different. In some ways, I suppose it's mainly going to be a collection of links that will be in the description below that I'm just going to talk about without trying to show in totality any of them because it would just be far too much. But the trajectory of this topic uh, was kicked off by a link somebody sent to me last week to a video, is a podcast interview from a couple years back, and it's interviewing this guy named Steve Outram. And the topic is uh, Silicon Valley and Burning Man. And they're getting into the the secret history of Silicon Valley and the whole San Francisco Bay Area and how it goes back even before the 60s as this hub of the military industrial complex and how that has all these connections into the, the quote unquote counterculture movement of the 60s and how that was all very much uh, fabricated by the CIA in all kinds of ways. And Honestly, there's like so much ground that he covers in this talk. That's why I feel like it is worth uh, sharing with you guys if you're so inclined to go listen to this because he just really gets into so much of the deep state connections, whether it's, uh, you know, Timothy Leary talking about Aleister Crowley and, of course, his pushing of LSD and all of these new age concepts. They get into the issue of the hero's journey and Joseph Campbell, which I've talked about before. They get into, you know, Aldous Huxley. And they talk about, I mean, you name it. I mean, talks about Esalen and Gene Roddenberry. And, and as well, one of the, the things that he, he goes into quite a bit is just talking about how there's such a history, such a long history of things being developed by the military, by the deep state, by the powers that be, that are disseminated to the public by partnerships between military contractors and various university departments. He talks a lot about Stanford and the Stanford Research Institute, which is pretty fascinating. Then how, from there, the people who are working in these university departments and programs then go on and create their own startups, and you have venture capitalism and, and all that. And so overall, Silicon Valley is this mechanism by which all of these technological developments, whether it's first, you know, the internet itself, which was created by DARPA, but then everything from, you know, all the smartphone technology and the development of artificial intelligence and how these things are being now introduced to the public just by way of capitalism and marketing and all that so that it isn't just coming straight from the government itself. So it covers lots of great ground. And then, of course, talking about Silicon Valley and its relationship to Burning Man, also a lot of really well-researched uh, connections between all the occultism and the New Age mysticism of Berkeley and San Francisco and the whole fabricated uh, movement of the 60s. 
and how that is translated now to this sort of second round generation of Burning Man and how Burning Man is a template for social engineering and so those are the things that Steve Outram, he's, he's researched really well, and is, he's opposed to the social engineering aspects or certain aspects of how it's kind of, I think in his mind, been co-opted by you know corporate interests and government interests, but he's still a fan of Burning Man at the same time. So, it's, so fair warning, you, you need to take it with a grain of salt and have discernment because n- neither one of these guys are Christians, and they're not having an understanding of the deeper spiritual deception that is uh, inherent to all of it and that's you know kind of par for the course so you know if if nothing else it serves as is a, another perfect example of of guys who are both of these guys are are very intelligent very well researched understand all kinds of history of how our modern culture has been manipulated and constructed and crafted to for a very specific reason and understand a lot about how you know the idea of false counterculturalism Countercultural movements that are really pushing agendas that are not anti-establishment at all, but have the perception of being free and an open source and all that. So lots of just interesting information, even if they don't get the deeper spiritual picture, and that's what is always so sad. But then in conjunction with that, last week I came across this, uh, it's a brand new documentary called Connecting with Universal Consciousness, and it's got guys like David Wilcock in it, preaching all the same you know, oneness, oneness with the universe message and talking about consciousness. And, you know, if you guys don't know by now, consciousness is essentially one of the main code words for the mystery religion. If you hear anyone talking about consciousness or preaching consciousness or raising consciousness, this is just a code word for this whole new age religion that can be expressed in very, um, what seems like ancient, naturalistic, like shamanic terms. It can be in very conventional you know, conventional-seeming mysticism that has nothing to do with technology, or it can be expressed in technological terms. And that's what's so interesting about that uh, interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson talking to Larry King. This is like a year old now. And Larry King asks him about AI and what are his feelings about it. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm all for AI. I'm not threatened by it at all. But then he does kind of scoff at the idea that it could ever achieve true general consciousness. And he's saying... You know, we don't even know what consciousness is. And it's interesting because later in the same interview, he's talking about simulation theory and how he thinks it's very hard to argue against the possibility that we're all just part of a computer simulation and, you know, some alien kid's basement. And, of course, that being most likely himself just an artificial world created in a computer by another outside reality and so on and so forth. So, the, so he totally believes in the whole nested simulation theory. Which would mean that all of us are essentially AIs. We are just programs that think we have sentience and think that we have self-awareness and consciousness, but in reality we're all just part of the same program, the program within a program within a program, which is just another way of talking about the same concept of, of fractals and the, the fractal reality. You just zoom in and zoom out and it's all, we're all, it's all one, it's all connected, it's all code within code within code. So. That's what's crazy, is that you can take Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he would probably, on the surface level, not think he had a lot in common with David Wilcock, or not be somebody that you would look at and say, yeah, he's preaching the same message that is central to Burning Man. But it really is all the same thing, and uh, pretty astounding is how we just continue seeing it all sort of coalescing back together as this overarching narrative, the mystery Babylon religion that can be expressed in different terminologies and different approaches, but ultimately it's all the same. Const- you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson is always talking about how we're all star stuff and we're all one with the universe in that sense. And in an atomic or molecular level, he thinks of himself as being just one with everything. But, he- <laughs> but then at the same time, he thinks that everything is all code and part of a simulated reality. So it's just a roundabout way of getting back to the same pantheistic, monistic you know, belief system whether you're a big fan of artificial intelligence or you're very anti-technology and just are more drawn to the idea of entheogens and natural, you know, plant-based shamanism. But it is pretty amazing that uh, Timothy Leary, who, you know, the father of, of LSD or whatever, the Johnny Appleseed of LSD, you know, he did make that statement that the, the PC, the personal computer, is the LSD of the 90s. And that's coming from a guy who had taken more LSD than almost anyone else out there. So for him to make that statement, even in the 90s, where compared to even now, computing was 
so much more basic. And here we are on the cusp of, they keep talking about breakthroughs with, with quantum computing and, oh, China's going to surpass the United States and achieve quantum computing first. And all of these things just keep bleeding into each other and just reinforcing each other and just presenting different faces of the same occult-based, scientistic, one-world religion. And uh, Silicon Valley is just, I mean, just looking into the, the history of Silicon Valley, you know, that was one thing that really kind of struck me as I was just listening to that interview, was how much I was familiar with, mm, I don't know, 80, 90% of what he was talking about. But to hear it all strung together and hear it all, just kind of get a whole download all at once, it was, it was, it was pretty overwhelming. Just how, like, you, you listen to it and you're just like, oh, man, the, the belly of the beast. Thinking about Silicon Valley and, you know, Bohemian Grove being connected to there since the turn of the century. And just all the military bases and then you have Berkeley and Stanford. and It's just a, an absolute hub of the military and the deep state combining with all sorts of paranormal research and, you know, psi research and different things like that astrophysics, NASA, DARPA, that's where you had the, the physics group, which was in the 60s and 70s, which I've talked about before, science fiction authors such as Philip K. Dick, who lived in Berkeley for most of his life. It's just, uh, the connections just never stop. <laughs> it is a pretty crazy rabbit hole, so proceed with caution. But um, I did want to talk about it just because it's been something I've been looking into quite a bit lately. And in the end, just finding solace back in, in good old Psalm 23. That uh, even though we walk through the, the Silicon Valley of the shadow of death, that we can fear no evil because he is with us. And as crazy as this world has already become and is continuing to be, we see the lies for what they are because God has revealed the truth in his word. And um, I just pray that for anyone who has been into this stuff and you've been researching things, whether it's, you know, quantum physics and quantum mysticism or the New World Order and the deep state and the whole technocracy angle and its connections to the counterculture movements and the CIA and all this, you know, MK Ultra, whatever. Maybe you've been digging in around in this stuff for years and you're still toying with all these New Age ideas. That if you see that they are all really coming from the same source, that they all are actually satanic. Because it's all about removing God from the equation. The biblical God. The God who was separate from his creation and came down and died for us because we could not save ourselves and has given us a chance for new life and new hope in his kingdom uh, that you would take a closer look at what the Bible says and who Jesus is and that um, he, it's really the only answer to all this craziness and all this techno mysticism that is just taking over the world right now. Alright, thanks for listening. God bless.
something weird happens in the world, some disruptive leader takes charge, and I wonder if that programmer just got bored and had to stir the pot. So they throw somebody in there just, to, just to, for their own entertainment. For me, that's some of the best evidence that we live in a simulation. <laughs>